Hello, this is Joe from Shop 2, and I'm joined by Dan. Hello. And uh, it's the Shop 2 Gaming Show, of course, and it's episode 8 now. Episode 8, we're getting close to double digits. Uh, well, I think we're stopping before then, aren't we? I think we've got the pom- this is the penultimate one next week, so... Yeah. Christmas special, I suppose you want to call it. Yeah, next week will be our Christmas special. I don't know what will be special about it, but we'll figure that out next week. <laughs> uh, it's special because we're going away for a few weeks. Yeah, <laughs> have to I've, about I've actually got tomorrow. To, we're recording this on Thursday. Thursday the what? What is it today? The 10th for something? Yeah. Yeah, so we're recording this Thursday. I've got tomorrow off, so I'm looking forward to that. I've got next Wednesday off, so I'm looking forward to that. And then I'm off for two weeks after next week. So, yeah. So there won't in be two a... weeks. You'll be playing loads of games, I imagine. Well, but the games that you can play. Loads of Battlefront, likely. <laughs> Although, actually, uh, I was having problems with Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection. I've been playing from the start, and my, my plan is to complete all three again before Uncharted Four comes out. And uh, I've been playing Uncharted, and it kept crashing at the Drowned City. Oh. Now, there's this bit where you're in the speedboat, and it kept crashing, and coming up with a blue screen. Right. And uh, a patch came out the other day, so I tried it again downstairs and it never worked. So last night I was upstairs and I thought, oh, I'll just get another go, and it never crashed. So, yes. <laughs> That's weird. I mean, is that, was it a console thing or was it just a I bad... I don't know. Was it a download? I, I think it might. I think my save file might have corrupted. I tell you, it's happened to me more than once. And sometimes, unfortunately, the harsh reality is we install the game. Yeah, but I d- it's, it was fine. I mean, I actually, actually got it, uh, tried it, it worked. So, yeah. Good. I there think what go. happened, what I'd done is I started that chapter again upstairs. I started that chapter from the beginning. So I never really lost much save data because I started the chapter rather than restarting the whole game. There you go. So, Just like uh, Nathan Drake, then you either come... Some severe problems, and you kept at it until you finally got the game to work. Yes, I'm pleased about that. Hero. So I can go back to Battlefront now until I'm in the mood to play that again. <laughs> so yeah, that's So good. I'm taking you're playing Battlefront a lot still then. Yeah, yeah, and it's fun. I love I it. Hit 20, I hit level 25 yesterday, so... Now, I'm getting into this blast mode now, because I've got that bounty hunter trait. I, I hit level 28 yesterday, because yeah. I'm doing a level a day, so I'm leveling up one a day, so I'm, I should hopefully be level 29 today, and then since I'm off tomorrow, I can probably get to f- get up a wee bit more, which uh, would be nice. I'm finding it so laggy at the moment, like constantly getting uh, connection problems. That's that. See, I've never had any issues with it yeah. at all. The, the, I'm into this blast mo- mode at the moment. Have you played much of that? I'm either Walker Assault or the um, the new one, uh, the, the one that came out. Yeah, the, the turning the point. You do need yeah. to try Blast because it's so much fun. They've just made the map so much smaller and yeah. and you just get so many kills. It's, it's I, just like, I just like the fact that I can get into a walker and just stand on people. Yeah, mm. that is fun, but <laughs> honestly... Right. That hasn't lost its magic yet. Try this Blast mode because I think you'll be surprised at how fun it is. Okay, the map design for just those is brilliant. It's really good the way they've they've cut the maps down for them. Yes, I noticed when I was doing some of the side missions for solo uh, play, there was um, a few maps that I hadn't played properly yet. Some really nice tight small ones, and uh, it would look quite exciting. So I might give that a go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we better go on the news because there's absolutely tons. There's so much news. It's going to just take up. It's, sure. it's getting ready just for the the breaking. I suppose everyone's get all their little bits out to tell you what's coming around. Okay, the, right, no particular order, just uh, all over the place is the order. Assassin's Creed Chronicles, India and Assassin's Creed Chronicles, Russia. God, I made hard work at that, didn't I? Assassin's Creed Chronicles, India and Assassin's Creed Chronicles, Russia to release next year and a trilogy pack also announced. Did you ever play Assassin's Creed Chronicles China? No. No, neither did I, but it's, I kind of saw it, it's like a little side scroll, is it? Okay. And uh, I no, think I'll, these I'll two... The Assassin's Creed games, to be honest. I think these two are got side scrollers as well, and they've just got to release them all in a trilogy pack for PlayStation 4, Vita, and PC. So there you go. I don't know much about them. Perhaps more interesting news in terms of the overall picture of gaming is the HTC Vive is to launch in April 2016. This is sort of HTC. Sees sort of a VR device ah. 
for okay. Steam and PC. I think they've worked with Valve in some respect to do it. So that's really the first VR to be dated. And it's... I mean, Sony said all along that uh, PlayStation VR would arrive in 2016. Mm. And everyone... Like quarter one 2016, so like basically between January and April. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see if that does happen still, because there I'm was finding an... it strange that there's been no solid announcement yet yeah. for a date. Um... There was an interview with uh, Shu Yoshida the other day, and he, he just said 2016, which kind of right. makes you think it's slipped a bit. And of I course, think it will now, because there's... there's no way you, you can't start having a console so important coming out with no fanfare at all. So close to a possible release date. Yeah, and then obviously there's the Oculus Rift, which also doesn't have a release date. So mm. it'll be interesting. We'll talk about VR a bit later when we go on to the PlayStation Experience stuff. But let's get into our news first. Uh, Resident Evil Zero HD Remaster is dated for January 19th. Now, uh, this includes two games, I believe. Uh, I think it's uh, Resident Evil 1 and 0, yeah. Yeah, so there we go. Good if you want that sort of thing. What do you think of that sort of game? Well, um, I've not played Zero in a very, very long time. Actually, it's the same with the, the, the re-release of Resident Evil 1 was very good. Um, I, I'm assuming they're updating the graphics there because it came out in the GameCube. I'm assuming they're sort of touching it up a little bit more as well for, is it Xbox One and PS4, is it? And PS3 and Xbox 316 PC. 1599 is. Yeah. I'll say, well, I'm, by the sound of that, it's just going to be just the original version, maybe a little touch-up here and there. But no, it's, it's, they're good games to have. You get your chance to get your trophies and your um, achievements for it as well, which is nice. I, I may actually give us a little nod, because Resident Evil is one of those games that you can come back to every now and then, and it's still as exciting and scary as it was all those years ago. So I think it's yeah, a good idea to do it. Yeah. And uh, also, it's, a good, it's also a good reminder to tell people, please don't hate our newer games. We did used to make good games. Please buy it. Okay, next, uh, Everybody's Golf uh, to release in oh, Europe. One of your favourites. On PS4 in 2016. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I love that. Worried about that. Who cares about VR headsets? And uh, Nathan Drake, yes, all about Everybody's Golf from now on. Oh, it's such a good game, though. It's just, I mean, I'm not really a big golf fan, I have to say, but... It's just got that fun element to it where you can just pick it up, play the graphics are quite cute. It's just it's just sort of fun, which is what you want sometimes. It was, well, it? It's, it's sort of captured, because I, I, I always enjoyed the Mario Golf games, and it captured that essence, but they actually released more of them, which is quite nice, so there's always something new around the corner. And the new one sounds quite good. You can just wander about the courses in a golf cart and just kind of <laughs> mess around. Yeah, so, golf cart racing. Yeah, there's, there's what, just what, going to be all different sort of ways to mess around, which sounds really fun. So, yeah, I'm into that. Uh, what are button used to have? I've got loads, loads, loads. So what much, it, that's um, why you're flying through it. Here, Elder wait there. Elder Scrolls, I think, coming out soon. Free the weekend, is it, this weekend? Yeah, oh, yeah, Elder Scrolls Online, free at the weekend. Also, the Sky Go has finally arrived in Xbox One. I thought I'd throw that in there, but a TV. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, it's, um, I've not really used TV on my Xbox for a long time now, and I've kind of I've stopped using the Sky anyway, so <laughs> I'm not bothered about that. More games, uh, Minecraft finally hitting the Wii U on December 17th. Although, oh. it, actually, it's a bit rubbish because they don't use the gamepad for inventory management. Oh, it's just is. used as an off-screen... <laughs> it's, I mean, that seems like a massive oversight to me. The only thing I will say is it might to them feel like it's changing the gameplay mechanics quite a lot. Yeah. And it might make the Wii version probably one of the better ones. So they would be very careful there. Yeah, it well, we wouldn't work make it better. <laughs> but no. it's, yeah, it doesn't, it's, it's, a, it's a Microsoft game now, isn't it? So why would they make a better version than Nintendo? Yeah. Here's another one. Dirt Rally hits consoles on April 5th. Sorry? Dirt Rally. Oh, dirt, oh the um, racing one, yeah. 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 Uh, oh, what else? What else? So much. I'd, I'd struggle to keep up with all these game names. But it's uh, Dying Light, the following enhanced edition, will release in February. That's an interesting one because it's obviously the new expansion, but they've enhanced some of the the actual yeah. original game. I heard the visuals are getting a bit of an update, which 
I mean, yeah. for uh, an update, for an update in the game, like, especially um, for years and years, you know, a game order to keep on chilling out DLC to actually go away and then build up a little bit more is a very interesting idea. Yeah, it says this version contains the original game, the expansion pack, the following. The Bozak Horde mode, the Be a Zombie mode, the Cuisine Cargo Challenge missions, the Ultimate Survival Bundle, and all the content updates released to date. Uh, also, uh, the the new animations is like a nightmare difficulty level, nearly a hundred new animations, new NPC models, advanced AI behaviour, and more. And if you own the game, you'll get all that sort of enhanced stuff updated for free. Oh, so that's that's how you do DLC and looking after customers. I mean, to me, that is a great idea. And this expansion they're releasing sounds like it's going to be quite good anyway. Mm. So that's good news, I'd say. It's, uh, I mean, it's good because it's going to revitalise a game that was very good when it came out and may have been sort of put by the wayside because of new releases. And I think it's a good idea just to bring it back to people's attention again, like with Bloodborne the other week. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake will be told across a multi-part series. <laughs> That's interesting. So oh. think like Game of Thrones, Telltale sort of style. No, the remaking not... it, but well, it could work because if you think, what was it? What was the other sort of triple A that done it? Uh, Resident Evil, didn't they do that? Yeah, but this is Final Fantasy VII. People just wanted the same game, but with a bit of graphics. And what they've done is, by the sound of it... Oh, they're completely what, remaking it, though, aren't they? I mean, it's... What I saw for the video, it was... Um, it looks like real-time action. Yeah. So it's been completely remade. So they're basically, because it's... I mean, it must be huge. It must be a huge undertaking to do that. So I'm guessing yeah. they're just thinking, to get it out there, we'll do it in part by part because otherwise you're going to be waiting years for it to appear so maybe they're thinking while people are thinking about it and want it we'll release an episode work on the next episode release that people have been wanting this for a very very long time they've just been sitting there twiddling their fingers for ages not doing about it I know but now we've got games coming out we better think of something quick because our recent ones haven't been too great or maybe they're maybe they're worried how much money they're going making it. So if they release it bit by bit, they'll make the money on each part. Then. Oh, there is I the danger know. as well that people play the first part, realise it's not what at all they wanted, and won't bother anymore. Oh, my phone started ringing there. Oh, that's, that's not that's ideal. Is it? So professional, isn't it? <sighs> See, it's alright. Yeah. I hung up. Sorry, whoever you are, you need to wait. <laughs> it's probably the missus is locked out. She needs to get in just for reason. <laughs> Can wait outside. Okay, right. Did you say she got walked out? <laughs> no, I don't know what you said. That just kind of made up an right. answer. Art okay. Survival Evolved coming out for the preview on the Xbox One. Yeah, that's interesting too because it, I think it is coming to PlayStation Four, Xbox One, PC June next year. But they're releasing it on the Xbox Preview Program. I don't think, I'm not sure PlayStation doesn't really have a preview program yet, does it? I don't know, uh, some some games, I don't know. I'm not sure about that one, but you can buy it on, I know Xbox does because they've done it with Elite and they're doing it with Arc as well, where you can get it now and it'll be cheaper basically. So if you get it now... I a while ago on the PC and uh, the idea is great, but... <laughs> The, the PC just couldn't handle it at all. Because yeah. I'm dying every time I turn the, the console on. So um, I'm looking forward to this one, actually. Yeah, quite an I mean, obviously game. the game's not finished, so if you're buying it now, mm. you're buying an unfinished product. But the bonus is, if it turns out to be an amazing game, then you'll be paying, you'll be paying less than you will when it comes out. So buy it now, and don't worry about paying the full cost later. <laughs> yeah, so that's something, don't you think? It's, it's a nice idea. It can be a bit dangerous. I mean, you felt a little bit sort of um, fatigued after playing Star Wars on the, the beta. It might yeah. be something similar here. You play loads of the game, and when they actually do an official release, you might turn around and go, actually, I don't want to play this anymore. So I've put loads of time already in it. Or you get a bad taste in your mouth sort oh, of thing. yes, yes. Which, yeah. could, which could put you off something that's much better later on. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, Psychonauts 2 is making a comeback. That's from the Game Awards that was announced. Uh, it's basically... It's not. Oh, you can't say it's making a comeback because it was never ever made. But <laughs> Psychonauts is making a comeback in the form of Psychonauts 2. 
uh, I don't really remember the original game. So. I never played it. I always see people harping on about it. I never, ever played it. Nah, me neither, so it's a bit difficult to talk about it. But it's looking for three million and some sort of Kickstarter website. Oh, it's hang not... on, it's got some here. Yeah, I've got some. Spare three million here. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Have it. But <laughs> it's quite interesting in that if you invest more than a thousand dollars in the game, you can make money back if it does well, which is quite interesting. Hmm. It's a new way of doing things, but yeah, we'll see. It'll probably do okay. I think it was at two million dollars last time I looked. Thing is, so, though, the psycho knots one not made much money, to help, hence the whole reason why they probably didn't make a sequel in the first place. I don't know what made it, but um, one point it <laughs> sold about one point six million copies or something, so it did okay. Right. But I mean, that was a long time ago, so it might do better. There's often there's often a lot of nostalgia going around to bring back all these old games, and I just wonder how if the people who are nostalgic about them are just the loudest. Well, who are, they, who are they trying to appeal to? Are they trying to go for, I hate using the term, but are they going for the hipster crowd? You know, the people that want something that's cool. Um, or are they going for the nostalgic side of things where, unfortunately, probably if you look at the gamers who are in their, probably their 40s, yeah. who probably do, don't even remember playing it and are too busy changing nappies. But, yeah. Yeah, who knows, who knows. I just wonder how many people would actually be interested. I mean, we'll see what we... We'll see. Mm. Uh, the Walking... I'm not going to be able to say this. The Walking Dead mission on or something from Telltale. Oh, shown. You're shown. I was close. Uh, yeah. That's from Telltale. That's on the way. Uh, cool. So that's, I'm guessing that's the next part to the series. That's the one uh, Telltale series I've not played, The Walking Dead. Because I don't know, I'm not really interested in the TV program or the sort of world. You're not? No, no my, my wife it, right? loves it a bit. She, she, she's probably watching it now, I think, downstairs. The, <laughs> I'm, 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 as I said before, big comic fan, so I've read up quite a lot in the comics. I'm a bit behind on the TV show. Um, I think you'll love it, I'm surprised. You've I'm not, not really into one. zombies, that's the thing. It's not, I mean, the zombies, even though it's based on them, you don't actually see many zombies in it. Um, it's very different to what you, I think you, what, you, what you're expecting from it. Yeah. Plus, well, I know my, it to it. my wife loves it, but I, I, I've never watched that, I have to say, so I don't know. Well, this, I mean, this is, it's, it's a good choice of character because this, um, you know, this sword building kick ass lady. So, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people might want to be interested in that one. Okay, right, anyway. I like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> Different league. <laughs> <laughs> what the uh, movie or the TV? <laughs> I remember having a crush on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. No, Sarah Michelle Gellar. <laughs> yeah, I did. Not that one, remember the movie? Oh, yeah, actually like the movie one? Yeah, I had a crush on her. I was like, oh, I like her. I remember seeing that movie and thinking, oh, wow. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> be her jaws any day yeah <laughs> yeah so long time anyway <laughs> uh, right leading into the playstation experience news sony launches ps2 games on ps4 we might yeah. have touched on that briefly last week but because uh, obviously they'd, re- they'd uh, released the star wars games for those who who uh, had bought the console the darth vader console but uh, there's more games now Dark Cloud, Grand Theft Auto 3 Grand Theft Auto 5 City Grand Theft Auto San Andreas uh, Rogue Galaxy The Mark of Kree Twisted Metal Black and War of Monsters those are all the ones available so, apart from a couple of them, they're not really games that I would have jumped at anyway No, and apparently they've released the 60 I hope I get a, the right way around they've released the 60 hertz version and America and the 50 here. Wow, that reminds me of the old Super Nintendo ways. Yeah. The, 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 the PAL and the uh, NTSC versions. Yeah, so the PAL versions have been released in the PAL regions, which I guess makes sense because at the time when they were released, they released the PAL versions, so they've just updated the versions that were yeah, previously sure released I mean, here. TVs don't have that effect anymore, I thought it was all just. No, nah, no, so the Americans yeah. kind of get it a bit better. Than we do is what it comes down to. I mean, I I don't understand the ins and outs of it. To be honest, it's all 
Can you not do the old trick of um, using an American account to purchase the American version? Yeah, yeah, probably. Speaking of American accounts, well, it's not really speaking of American accounts, speaking of Japanese accounts, (laughs) uh, the the remastered version of uh, Gravity Rush came out. Oh, on, on, on the PlayStation in, 4. On PlayStation 4 in Japan. Yeah. Uh, so that's how. It's it, coming it, out here. I've not tried it, okay, but okay. it's coming out here. I'm waiting for the UK version, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of talking in there. I think going for the Japanese one, you might struggle a bit. <laughs> yeah, and I've put, got it in Vita. What's the point? I mean, I may as well just wait and, and see what happens. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, actually. That was a good Vita game. And that's another one I wouldn't actually mind playing again. Yeah, I think it's a, be... a lot of missed on it, so it'd be quite a good game to have another I go on. I think it'll soon. be good on PlayStation 4, but mm. I guess I'm wondering how they're going to do it. Because obviously it was quite reliant on Vita, wasn't it? The different ways of Vita, the different uh, features of it. Well, you've got the touchpad on the top of the console still, so that'll probably apply to a lot. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll work well. Yeah. yeah, well, the thing is, I've, actually, I've hardly used that touchpad, and most games I've played, that's never used. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay, that's so... <laughs> Such drag. Uh, what was I going to say? No, I mean, looking at this uh, this PlayStation, going even further back to the PlayStation 2 games, do you think Xbox would pick up some of their old the original Xbox console titles? Or? Yeah, they're probably looking into it. I think they're all wasting their time just concentrating new stuff. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I, there are a few games that I'm thinking why well, really bother. I mean, Twisted, Twisted Metal Black. I think that's more for the Americans than for us, to be honest. I think like that was bigger that yeah, maybe, yeah. But nah, I don't bother. Who cares? I'm not really that bothered. I'm trying to concentrate on new games. Wait a minute. I know this is a bit of a delayed reaction. Did you say you don't use the touchpad much? <laughs> No, I was, I was trying to think of a game where I've actually had to do swipey movements on. There's hardly anything. No, well, but it is utilised quite a lot as like an options button or for maps or for. Oh, yeah, ex- yeah, no, that, that, but that's just okay. So instead, they're going to start on to that button for that, to be honest. No, I mean, actually using it to touch and move things around. Yeah, because you can use it to swipe, can't you? Yeah, I yeah, agree no, there. No, you don't get used to it. Much. Use it very, very long time. It's a shame because it's quite a clever thing to have there. I quite used to like it. I'm sure there was a game where you used to swipe to do a grenade with it. Which That's I think... Don't, a... I, like to go I, I actually think it's in the wrong place. I haven't played it for quite a while. It should be a bit lower. But... Yeah, possibly. But it seems quite an interesting idea. You swipe it to to, uh, to throw a grenade or something. Yeah, the, this is where I think the same problem that Nintendo have had in the past... They create these amazing ideas, but in the end, it's down to the people that make the games to utilise it. And yeah. I think they're quite stuck into ways. And if it's third party, it. it's too yeah. hard because they've got to do it on the Xbox as well. Yep. So they end up just sticking to standard controllers. Yep. Ah, well. We'll see if anyone else uses it. I'm sure someone it's will. Sure, join make one giant mega company and then just tell us what to buy. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to PlayStation Experience news now, because there's even more bloody news out of that. It's like a newscast today. Uh, The first thing they showed was a new Uncharted video, another one. Uh, Sam and Nathan reunited. This is his long-lost brother, Sam. What was interesting about this is they actually had dialogue choices in the video. So... I don't. I don't think there's going to be much to it. To be honest, I think it's you just did little choices about. He says, "What have you been up to?" or whatever, and then you can choose where to start. Basically, so I, do, okay. I, I don't think it'll happen very often, and I don't I don't think it'll have a huge impact in the game. But it's nice it's in there. I think just to say, "Hey, this is here," and obviously the game's looking fantastic as you'd expect. So that's good. Uh, what was interesting, after the show was over, Sean Layden, who's like the American boss, he came out wearing a Crash Bandicoot t-shirt. <laughs> cool. Although I've just noticed I wrote in my article, he came out wearing a Crash Bandicoot trailer. <laughs> so I don't know how he would have managed that one. <laughs> just tugging it up behind him. 
<laughs> but uh, to be fair, it was Saturday. It wasn't maybe working, and I did write a lot. So I'll let it's myself away. Dedication to the news right there. There was a Final Fantasy Seven trailer after that. What we've just talked about that, mm. so we'll just skip over that. There was a uh, some Little trailer, Battleborn, Battleborn, yeah. Uh, China, this new character they announced a penguin in a mech suit. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Which sounds, I'm not sure what to think of that game. <laughs> I remember I once no the idea publisher on called me and goes, Oh, do you want to do like an interview with the developers of it? And I goes, yeah. Okay, then. And then when it came round to it, they'd, they had to cancel it or something. I don't know why. It was a long time ago. Maybe they decided the game wasn't ready to be talked about or something. But I just don't know what to make about it. I mean, it's the people who make Borderlands in it, so you'd think in that respect it should be quite good. Mm. And it, they say it'll have the same sort of humour, and it'll have a... So what it seems to be, I mean, having a penguin in a mech suit is sunk in a similar kind of humour as what the Borderlands was. Yeah, and it's going to be pipe and multiplayer action, but it's also going to have solo gameplay mm. and co-op gameplay, so it could be interesting, I guess. Oh, I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think of it, but it looks pretty. It could be good fun. And then we've got Street Fighter Five new character yeah. shown off, Fang or F A N G. I don't know anything about fighting games. Street yeah, Fighter is sure. always one of those games that used to go over my head as to why people like it, but I'm, I've, it's because I've never really been into fighters. I used to play it in the arcades a lot and on the old Super Nintendo and Mega Drive, but um. Yeah, try and get back into those games. I, don't I think find it pretty anymore. boring. I mean, you're on the screen, there's two cats on the screen, they're fighting against each other, and that's it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've been not... trying to play down in uh, the Brighton, one of the, uh, the few remaining arcades in Brighton, and you have a quick go, and then some kid just comes along, puts his money on the side, and just whips your ass within seconds, you think, oh, sod that, I ain't playing this anymore. I mean, it <laughs> looks... a waste of money. Oh, I go shoot some stuff in time crisis. I mean, it's a good, I guess it's a good uh, thing for Sony that they got it exclusive and it's probably going to be a really popular game but I mean it's not really a sort of game that's for me that's all but oh well, can't have everything can you uh, what else, what else adult oh, swim games I'll wait there, I'll get to that I've, oh. Oh. I've just looking through the list uh, we've got a load of new games there was one called Dead Star oh yeah, that's a little top down shooter isn't it yeah, that, yeah it's a spacey Thing, so uh, that was quite interesting. Come to PC and PS4. The Adult Swim games you just talked mm. about, there's a bunch of them. I know the names of them Death Scambit, Raise the Dead, Duck Game, Rain World, Small Radios, Big Televisions, and one from Double Fine called Headlander. So there we go. And then obviously after that, Tim Schafer talked about the Day of the Tentacle. Right. Remaster. So that's him remastering another game. So there we go. Jink and that. Did you, did you play Day of the Tentacle? Uh, I remember having it on the PC a long, long, long time ago. Um, that's yeah, another sorry, one I don't have. I don't, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure that's the one where they had the other game hidden inside it, wasn't it, I think? I remember playing some of these games like Monkey Island, obviously. Indiana mm-hmm. uh, Jones. I mean, that, that needs a remake, definitely. There's a few, and I quite enjoyed his, but I'm not really that fussed, to be honest. Oh, there, his studio is also making a Psychonauts Rumbus of Ruin, which has been made for PlayStation VR. Okay. So, oh. that could be interesting. Well, it's good and, to know that someone's actually focusing the game on the VR now. So and he's remastering Full Throttle as well, and our okay. game, I'm not 100% sure. I never played that well. That was kind of near the end of the... Uh, uh, what do you call it? That, kind of, that kind of game, that genre, it was kind of dying around that sort of time. I know it was a very good game to finish on, but yeah, that's good, isn't it? Uh, Don't Starve Together Console Edition. Uh, let's just fly through these now because it's getting boring. Zodiac, something or other. Oricon Odyssey. Yakuza Zero. That could be. Uh, Yakuza Zero is coming west to PS4. So that's good news. Hitman Go coming to PS4. Vita as well. King of uh, Fighters, another fighting game. New King of Fighters. The Last Blade 2. Neo. Oh, God. Neo, yeah. Uh, Brutal. What is, what, is, what is Neo? What is that? Uh, MLB The Show as well. Oh. 16. 
which is good. Uh, a bit of Ratchet and Clank, and of course Fat Princess, which you reviewed earlier. Uh, yeah, Fat I'm Princess Adventures. One that is definitely interested in me is the uh, the Res Infinite for the um, the VR. I mean, I, I absolutely love Res, so for it to come out in the VR is going to be very good. I think. Then there's Guns Up, which actually released during the show as well. Uh, our Ratchet and Clank get shown off. That looks fantastic. And then there was a big sort of, uh, what do you call it, a big demonstration of PlayStation VR, which was quite interesting because uh, I was thinking, how are they going to show VR off? But the way they've done it, they just showed it on the screen. Uh-huh. So I guess it was okay. I mean, I don't really know how, how else you do it. Really, well, it's quite it's- hard. Obviously, you're going to lose a lot of the impact of the game itself, aren't you? That's yeah, no but they did have a ton of units at the show to let sure. people play, and there was a ton of games announced for that. Highlights being Eagle Flight, Modern Zombie I'm Taxi. Just, just looking at one here, 100 yeah. foot robot golf. Oh, That's yeah, I was going genius. to mention that. Mod- <laughs> it, looks, modern... it looks terrible, but it looks a genius idea. Modern Zombie Taxi Company, that was fun, but that, that 100 foot robot golf, that just. What's going on? Also, something you fun. might like, which is, isn't VR related, the Destiny Sparrow Racing League. <laughs> uh, tell you, you what, that, that is, that, this is the point where I have no interest in Destiny now. For someone that played so much, don't want it anymore. No. no. And on Nino Kuni 2, which I'm quite pleased yeah. about, because the first one's great. Well, uh, there's also a mention of an Ace Combat game. Yeah, yeah, for VR and it's, PlayStation 4. Fantastic. And yeah, they closed well. the show with Paragon as well, which is a sort of epic, epic games MOBA. So, don't know. Valkyrie Chronicles 2, when was that announced? Did we talk about that already? Yeah, I'm sure I don't you even mentioned remember that, when that was announced. It's left my head, but. You, you mentioned it a couple uh, podcasts ago. Yeah. But I, you were I excited about that because you did enjoy the other original. Just Nino Kuni reminded me of it, so. Yeah. Yeah, Nino Cooney too could be good. I mean, the first one was brilliant. Yeah, I think it, it really opened up. It made it made that kind of game a lot more accessible. I thought, and um, had a great direction. Yeah, so, so a sequel, a good potential. So that's it. Yeah, there was a lot of news. A lot of news, and we've just spent having our sort of western it talking it's about busy, it. Yeah, well, it's, you know. It's a lot of games coming up, which is what we want, isn't it? We want to yeah. Games. Speaking of games coming up, actually, I wrote an article. Let me try and find it. Uh, it was just about what there is kind of to look forward to next year. Looking ahead to PS4 and Xbox One 2016. You can read the article on the website. But Wii U with Zelda. Come on, don't forget Zelda. Yeah, well, I, I never, to be honest, I never really <laughs> mentioned... I don't class Nintendo as a company anymore. <laughs> I never, I never mentioned Nintendo. I was just kind of sticking to PlayStation and Xbox because I thought, well, nobody really cares much about the Wii U anymore, do they? To oh, be fair, you hurt me with your with your words. They sting me. But it's true, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, nobody really, nobody's really that bothered about it. I mean, that, you know, there are still some people that play it. Still yeah, but there's not really that many games coming out next year. Zelda, I mean, I'm a big Zelda fan, so I'm, I look forward to that. But when you look at the list of PlayStation and Xbox, it's... I mean, just listen to this list. I wrote just for PlayStation alone. Uncharted 4, Horizon, The Last Guardian, Ratchet & Clank, Gran Turismo Sport, well, at least the beta, Street Fighter 5, Star Ocean 5, Hellblade, World of Final Fantasy, Near 2, Gravity Rush, Gravity Rush 2, No Man's Sky, Deep Down, Detroit Become Human, Drawn to Death, Persona 5, and Yakuza 0. And then there's the PlayStation VR and Just all like the titles there. for that. What was that? It's like Near 2? Yep. Huh. So they're all exclusives. <laughs> and, right, okay. And those could all be... 2016 exclusives for PlayStation. I imagine some of them would get delayed, but that's a pretty impressive list, is it not? That's not yeah, Compared to this year, that's an impressive list. Uh, the Xbox list, this is smaller, but it's only because I've not, I've not included any indie games in any of these lists, and Microsoft's probably still got games that's not announced yet, but even mm-hmm. this smaller list is quite good. Gears of War 4, Crackdown 3, 
Quantum Break, Scale Bound, Halo Wars 2, Recore, Sea of Thieves, uh, Killer Instinct Season 3, is pushing that a bit, putting that on there, and Fable <coughs> Legends. So, I mean, this is not bad either, is it? I imagine they've got a few more to announce. So, uh, 2016 could be a pretty good year, <laughs> don't you think? Uh, well, it's, I'd say, like I said before, this year, the end of this year, finally felt like there was a lot of games coming out, and next year seems like it's going to be just a storm. This is great. What's, what do you see your most anticipated game is for next year? Dark Souls 3, um, yeah, and Zelda. I think for me... It's got to be Uncharted 4 is probably up there. Yeah. Uh, Last Guardian, because I've been waiting so long for it, and it just looks amazing. It looks incredible. Uh, Crackdown 3. They've got to the point where they just can't cancel that game now, can they? They're probably sitting there thinking, this game's awful, but we've still got to make no, it. No, but they, what they did show of it, with the new footage just looked incredible. It looked amazing. Just footage, uh, though. It's not the game. Well, it was some gameplay. They did yeah. play the game. So yeah, okay. All right. it did look good, but it was only a little bit. And then there's Horizon from Godzilla, which just looks amazing yeah. as well. So I got No Man's Sky recorded as well on the PlayStation. Oh, yeah. and everybody's golf here. Why is everybody's golf not in the yeah. list? Oh. There's an R exclusive for you. That's what I'm looking forward to. Gravity Rush too. Oh, there's so many, there's so many. I can just, uh, I can just cry with joy. <laughs> but also that now he realises that as I have a lot of reviews you've got to do now yeah that's be very true. busy next year very busy yeah but I will you can't yeah. you can't complain can you not the slightest no, I'm looking forward to it actually there's a lot of good stuff coming out and, uh, still a lot of re-releases coming out but I'm still quite there seems to be picking some good ones in there so like Resident Evil one of you I've got a topic here which says uh, spread uh, the games out which I presume is quite relevant in that I think Sony does spread the games out throughout the year but Microsoft I think likes to keep its games to sort of quarter three, quarter four when it's going to make the most money out of them Uh, I mean but if you think about it Microsoft last year all their games they call it uh, what did they call it the best year ever for Xbox or something Something oh, like this that. year because they had all the blooming. Yeah, but they, that's because they, that, they they released them all at the same time. Yeah. If you think about it, Sony spread its uh, releases out throughout the year, so it could have done the same and put them all together and goes, there you go, we've got all these exclusives. But rather than doing that, it spread them out. And then looking to next year, Sony's looks like it's doing the same again. I mean, it's putting Uncharted 4 in March. Whereas if it put it in November, it'd just go everything out, else out the water, I would think. Uh, but it's putting it in March, which is a big exclusive to put in March. Well, I think mm. Microsoft's putting... Uh, what are they putting in March, April? They're putting Quantum Break April, I think, which is good. It's nice to see them release a game sort of earlier in the year. Yeah, because uh, the beginning of the year is very quiet. It makes me wonder what Sony will do for the latter half of the year. I think we'll be seeing like, Horizon and The Last Guardian together. So I do. I'm not forgetting the PlayStation also had another console essentially with the VR to deal with. Yeah, and the VR is going to be in there. That will probably be summertime, I think. Get get the games out there. But mm. the games I've seen for that don't really impress me much. They all feel kind of like tech demos. <laughs> good, it's going to be to start with. I mean, there's no way around it. People are still feeling what exactly you can do with this new bit of equipment. It does make me wonder uh, what, what the games is going to be like. Do you know what I mean? Uh. But we'll just need to wait and see. Uh, so from there, that would be good. Uh, as there too many games next year was another thing I had to talk about. I mean, uh, all there's too many games because that way there's a lot more choice. The only thing you might find with that is it can saturate the market, at which mm. point it makes the companies not make as much money because there's more choice. It's but, crazy um, thing. I just listed all those games there, but that's without even talking about the third party games we've got coming. I mean, yeah. oh, I can't even, my brain's not even functioning in the first third party games we've got coming. What, we've got Mirror's Edge, haven't we? Oh. Uh, what else? I'm, sure another, I'm sure there's another Star Wars game tucked in there somewhere. Yeah, Visual Star Wars game might come out. I'm sure there'll be a new Battlefront, not Battlefront, Battlefield. Uh, 
obviously we've got the Call of Duties and all that, FIFAs and stuff. But what's our exclusives? Have we got third party coming next year? Can you think of any? None. It's because I've only (laughs) been been thinking about uh, this, thinking about uh, the Sony and Microsoft that I never even thought about third party. I I need to rack my brain for that one. But I'm sure there's probably some pretty big games coming. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. XCOM 2. That's only PC though. Uh, Far Cry Par- Primal. Um, so Ubisoft is bound to have some bits tucked away, isn't there? Yeah, there's got Lego Marvel. Was there, Rain- was there a Rainbow Six game coming out? Um, what, the one you'd have viewed, do you mean? No, the other one. There's two of them, wasn't there? There's one where they're kind of they're walking around the streets shooting people that sounds like every other game of the made oh, to- the division that's the one <laughs> the division yeah uh, I don't think I'm, god I, I might just be in thicker is there just no that many games been announced for 2016 yet I mean I'm not, looking at a list the, here. The, from other developers point of view maybe you're right I can't remember what was on E3, to be honest. I mean, but... the Mass Effect game from EA. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's 2016, though. Andromeda, yeah. I mean, I'm just going to... For... There's one called For Honor from Ubisoft. I, I don't remember much about that, though. I imagine that, that was an E3 game, but I, d- I don't really remember much about it. Assuming it's... there's going to be another Assassin's Creed of some description. Yeah, Dead Island 2, uh, Hitman... Yeah. Just the X Men kind of divided. Wasn't there a Turtles game coming out? Yeah, well, it's not been officially announced, I don't think, but it was sort of outed. Dishonored 2, Doom, The Mirror's Edge one I mentioned, Battleborn. Yeah. Looking at this list, I'm kind of a little bit disappointed by the third parties. I'm sure they've probably got a lot more coming. There's more to come, but don't forget, these guys. I probably don't have as much money to throw at it for advertising and getting your attention and the Sony's and Nintendo's and yeah, yeah. Microsoft's do so that'll be a little bit closer to the time when they start sort of trumping the trumpets okay let's move on to what we've been playing ah. <laughs> even though I've only been playing uh, Battlefront <laughs> <laughs> well, short conversation <laughs> yeah well, well you know it's still a good game what have you been playing I was on Rainbow Six Siege for a good few days. Oh, and, uh, yeah, you ate that. Yeah, you know, I. Well, when it works, it's brilliant. Like I said in the review, it is one of the best uh, multiplayer sort of tactical experiences I've had on a console. Yeah. Um, you can get a team of people chatting to you. This could be, it is a brilliant game. And because there's loads to unlock, you can have some great time doing it. But if you're if you're kind of like the lone wolf kind of player on online games, you are going to struggle. You might occasionally come across a good game, but for the majority, if people aren't talking, it's just an absolute mess, and uh, you're not going to have any fun really because people are going to be shooting each other, running into the game, um, and getting just torn apart too quickly. So it's uh, it's definitely a team game. Um, it looks been... great. Sounds great. Um, and it is it's surprisingly for a game that is it's kind of on I say it's online only in as much as the single sort of campaign is a train a series of training missions that focus you towards being fully trained to use all the equipment that is available to you which there is a lot um, so it's really an online only game as well so bear that in mind but um, if you have a group of people even two of you because if there's two of you talking it makes a big difference I kind of, I've, well, I said I'd just been playing Battlefront, but I've been playing Just Cause a bit as well. Uh, oh, yeah. You, you I, still wait for it to load, are you? Yeah, that's the problem with the game. I mean, it's full of wooden screens, and it's a bit like, oh, God, I don't like sit here watching all these screens. That's what really puts me off, but I kind of just want to, occasionally I just kind of want to just play it and blow stuff up. I struggle with loading, game, loading games because... I, I was brought up with cartridges, and specifically Nintendo, and I remember very well that one of their sort of their thought processes was the game should be working as soon as you plug it in, and that's it, no more loading or anything. And that's what made me choose a console over a PC, even though we had a PC in the house. 
I very rarely go to a PC to play it. Um, and for a very long time, that was my thought process. And now seeing that home consoles have become so overpowered, they have to load. Um, and that to me is a bit of a step back because I say, I've just, you know, I'm just really impatient. If I turn a game, I don't want to play it now. Yeah, get the wooden screens. We should start a campaign. Get the wooden screens. Go back to cartridges. Right, I mean, uh, they'd be massive. If you think like a, a you know, 20 gig cartridge for a computer game, <laughs> feel like the size of a house <laughs> today, right? Right, before we move on to your questions, I just want to say, like, I, I watched the Game Awards a bit because I woke up. I didn't need to start watch it intentionally because it was on too late at night. But, uh, you it was, I watched this guy, Greg Miller, give a speech about, he won the, he's got like some popular guy in America who does shows about what, what we do, I guess, uh, kind of funny.com. They are good. I mean, they have a podcast, the PlayStation podcast called PSL of you, and that's really good. So I quite like listening to that. But he won the sort of gaming personality or something. But he gave us a really good speech just saying, oh, sort of, there's loads of these developers who don't get recognition. They're maybe just sitting on Twitter quietly in the background watching people slagging off their game when it gets released sort of thing. Yeah. And no one knows who they are. Do you know what I mean? Because if you think about it, I mean, there's people who get what's the recognition like Shu Yoshida, who's head of yeah. Sony Worldwide Studios, or or people who are in charge of Gearbox, like Randy Pitchford, people like that. I mean, they're well-known. Uh, Clive Blansky, who used to work for yeah. Epic, everybody knows who they are. So, I mean, obviously, they, they kind of get all the plaudits and people look forward to their games and stuff. But if you think about it, there's just... Hundreds and thousands of people who make games. Oh yeah, I mean these trees. You know, if you're walking through a real world, there's a tree there. Someone made that. Someone sat there and created a tree. You know, they're probably to them it's the best damn tree ever. But to people, they just totally slag it off and hate it. I know, yeah, and it, like, oh. I, it just made me think. It just made me think. Well, hey, we appreciate everything you do. Is that a thing, don't we? we yeah, have... that, you know that's the reason why I'm not so attacking and scathing when I do a review uh, because someone irrespective of the constraints they have for money and time, they've done the best they possibly can in the, um, the tools they're given to create a game for you and they hopefully enjoy doing it Exactly, and I mean I mean, I do feel that reflects in my review sometimes, yeah. unfortunately some games are terrible um but I still sort of think, well, you know what? I'm not going to be out and <laughs> here because someone has made this. Yeah. You know, and they're the best they can. And unfortunately, terrible to me could be good to someone else. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a. So, yeah, we appreciate you all. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Because, I mean, I've put hours into Battlefront, for instance, and there's probably hundreds of people that made that. And I just want to say, and for any game I've played. Over the years, I just want to say thanks to everybody who makes them. Just, oh, oh. <laughs> it's soft. It's soft. <laughs> you swore there I'm going to beep that out. Thanks for giving me great, even more work to do. <laughs> beep out swears, do you? Oh, fair enough. Well, I have to because we're marked as queen on iTunes for some reason. Oh, you see, I didn't realise that. Sorry. Unless I can unmark it. I'll see. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> well, let's just put a little... Honk over the, the top of it or something, can't you? Yeah, we'll see what we can do. Anyway, we'll time for you the questions. Uh, we've only got a couple of questions. Uh, so, hey guys, great job in Shop 2 Game Show. I have two questions for you. First question, I loved the original Mirror's Edge when it released back in 2009. It was gem and one of my favourites of last generation. The gameplay and art style is beautiful. The learning curve was strict but very fun. Uh, so, did you enjoy the original Mirror's Edge? And what was your favourite thing about the game? Oh, I can't wait for the sequel. And I love the first one. Um, I think it was when you first figured out how to do vaults and wall jumping. I think for me, it was that moment where I said, hang on, this game's brilliant. Because, it's that, like I said, the learning curve there, there's a bit where you're um, trying to get to a slightly higher walkway uh, in quite a tight, confined space. And ages, I was just running off the walls and bouncing over, couldn't figure it out, and all of a sudden they just twigged. And then the game really opened up, and I thought that was like, hello, this is this is a good game. Yeah, the and second then, um, game was yeah. interesting, I think, from what I've seen of it. 
It looks... I, did like, I didn't like the reliance on combat, though. I think that actually ruined it a little bit. I would have been happy running around for ages. Yeah, it's just one of these things you just need to see what it's mm. like when when it comes out, really, Well, it? I would say, if, if you enjoyed that and you're looking for, like, a filler, then Dying Light is definitely worth a bit of attention, especially with all the updates it's getting at the moment, because that is kind of park hole with zombies. Yeah, oh, definitely. So that's definitely worthwhile having a little look if you're thinking of games similar to it. The second question was, is Shop 2 getting the Mirror's Edge Catalyst Collector's Edition for the online store when it's set to release sometime next year? Uh, I can't really answer that, so I'm not, I just I tried to find out, but I uh, don't know at the moment, so we'll get back to you in that one. <laughs> so I'm sure we will make sure people are aware of that as and when it comes out and when we get news on it, because obviously it's quite an interesting collection, isn't it? So. Yeah, okay. Uh, right, so next week... I don't know what we're going to do next week. We're going to have a... Christmas calendar. We're going to have a little top five games of the year. Top five games of the year. We'll do our last show of the year, and then we'll have a wee break for a few weeks. And then... But for now, that's it. That's the game show over. Thanks for joining us. Please don't forget that you can like and subscribe on iTunes, and you can also get us on YouTube as well, at youtube.com slash shop2. There's a download link on the website as well. There we go. That's everything. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.